A word for our listeners. Season 3 of Masks of Nyarlathotep is set in the 1940s. We will be using terms and sayings from those times, including some that could be considered offensive. It's not our intention to offend. We merely wish to offer as accurate a view of the time period as possible. Welcome to Masks of Nyarlathotep, a Nerds Domain gaming podcast. Join us each week as our investigators uncover the corruption of the mythos in World War II. Starring Roxanne Thompson, Shirley Nedswicky, John Thompson, and Phil Durham, with Matt Quiet running the table as Keeper. Eldritch evils and crazed Nazi cultists await you just beyond this music. Hey everybody and welcome back to the Nerds Domain Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep. I'm Matt and I am here with Shirley. Hello. And Phil. Hello. Uh, and from uh, the far off land of Texas, we're also joined by John Thompson. Hi. Roxanne Thompson. Hello, hello. All right. <clears throat> uh, so, we... Oh, good. Phil has immediately sent me something that I need to look at. <laughs> this is the best way to start it. Why did you send me a star? Because you got all the intro stuff. You got a gold star. <laughs> you got a gold, you got a gold star. star. You guys are jerks. <laughs> well, um, it's not Skyline, but... <laughs> anyway, we're going to focus. I'm going to focus and not think about Skyline. Uh, so, um, we're going to not do a recap because the listeners at home will have just heard the previous episode and know who everybody is. And I think we've already covered who everybody is, right? Did we get yeah, names for so. all the characters? Yeah. Excellent. Um, yeah, we're good. So, uh, it is June 1940. Um, as we said in the last episode, your your group um, has been given kind of the go ahead to do whatever you see fit as, as far as what to follow up on. Um, about a week ago, um, as the story opens, you were given an, an intelligence report from a uh, an agent in British Somalia, Somaliland, Somaliland, not Somalia. Uh, which, if you aren't familiar, is on the east coast of Africa, um, just south of Kenya. Um, the The report is that there was a group of uh, German soldiers moving through into Congo, which is technically Belgium at this time, or Belgian at this time. Uh, however, Belgian Belgium has also um, surrendered to. Belgium has officially surrendered to the Nazi government after they essentially ran in and took over. Um, the Congo is one of its um, one of its uh, what do you call those colonies, and so its position is kind of unknown at the time. Although it does have its own military force, not huge, but very big con for a colony. Not big considering the number of soldiers that could kind of pour into there from the neighboring uh, Italy. Italy uh, occupied areas. Um, so about uh, 50 men, about 50 people came through. One of them was of note. Uh, she looked as though she was Egyptian. Um, and the the intelligence information says that they heard the name Nidicris mentioned when speaking to her. Um, for you guys that don't remember, Nidicris is one a, a member of the Black Sun. Um, she's of note for a couple of reasons. One, she's married to a British, a member of British nobility who may or may not be dead. He, uh, officially, he is dead. Uh, his name is uh, Reginald Winthrop Wilkerson III. He is the he was the Earl of Sandwich. Um, he also is a former uh, associate of Professor Weld, who runs Section F. Um, Nidicris is of note because of that, but also because she's an ancient Egyptian sorceress who has been raised back from the dead. Um, she comes from a time between, I believe, and this is Matt forgetting, um, but it is pro correctly in the notes that Weld would have provided to you, between the third and the fourth dynasty of Egypt. So in a time uh, around, and by around, I mean within a few hundred years of uh, King Tut. Um, 
and she was a powerful sorcerer at the sorceress at the time and is now has been resurrected as of 1926 and has been working with the Nazis for at least a few years if not longer um, so Nidicris is a is a pretty big name uh, and if she's going somewhere and has been seen it's something that Weld felt was important enough to, to give to you and not suggest you go because he wouldn't he seems very hesitant to push you towards her at all but if you wanted to follow up on it he would provide any and all support that he could let's do something else <laughs> <laughs> thanks Shirley thanks I'm glad I put all this time and effort into planning <laughs> stuff thanks sounds like a job for the goon squad <laughs> right yeah we should send in the B team <laughs> I did. <laughs> um, so, uh, we will open up on a <clears throat> boat. Yeah, I know. That's why I told you those roleplay notes are important. Oh, my God. Uh, you have taken a, uh, a steamer from um, Southampton to um, a town in Congo that I've forgotten the name of already. Doing really good on this. Um it's on the Congo River. It's not super far inland, but it is about as far in on the Congo River into the into Congo that you can go before it really just uh, starts becoming waterfalls. And you can't keep going up the river. Uh, the name of the town is Boma. B O M A. Um, it's a port town, not huge. Um, you guys are getting ready to enter the Congo River, so you're just off the coast of uh, Africa on the west coast. Um, Bomas are going to be about another day up the river. And then from there, you have um, the Belgians have provided uh, a, a couple um, defense force members that will act as guides that will speak the local languages and, and know the area pretty well. But if the, the Germans were coming from the the east they're deep in the jungle um and that is probably where you're where you'll find them that's they've not been seen any west of that area okay does that all make sense so far mm -hmm. yeah are you looking at the map yeah okay. so i was a little distracted no it's okay so no basically uh, if you're looking at like straight google maps <laughs> right so uh, they're going to be there they came in from what is now tanzania oh okay I guess they would have come through Kenya. They would be oh, okay. in the Rwanda Burundi area, just west of that. That is essentially a giant jungle scape in the time. So right now, it's believed that they yeah. they were last seen in the Rwanda Burundi area. Yeah, and they're heading west, so they would be in what is now the DRC. Yeah, and we're you're coming into Boma, which is pretty far west, but you'll be taking. You'll Boma. be traveling that way. Boma is a place now. So. Yeah. And you've been on the boat for about, well, like, essentially you got the information, which came quickly th over, th over the wire, and packed your stuff and left. So within six hours, you guys were on a boat headed this way. Okay. Sh Shirley, what's wrong? So Rebecca will seem very, very, very um, perturbed, I would say. Perturbed? Anxious, perturbed. Um, she would probably remain in her cabin most of the time and for some unknown reason want to have her gun ready. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, she would, uh, express her distaste for being on any type of water numerous times. And that's that. Do we have an approximate length of time it would take for the boat trip? Uh, it's going to take about a week and a day to get to Boma. Once you're from, once you're on ground, um, so we're on. We're oh, he's a, you're on, on the boat. boat. You've been on the boat for a week. It's going to take another day okay. to get to Boma. Boma. Okay. Once you're off the boat, um, what is this? Is this a navy boat? Is this a commercial boat? This is a is commercial it? boat. Okay. Um, you're not going in, like, you're not going in with a military force. So they didn't want to send. A military force like traipsing 50 guys through the through the jungle is going to cost a lot more in resources and logistics than the four of you. So I'm in my so. civvies. 
probably. It's up to you. You could be in, you know, appropriate, um, not camo, but uh, military gear. But if you wanted to be in civvies, that'd be perfectly fine too. Major, what are we wearing? Um, I'd say we were probably probably in civvies. Okay. Okay. Till we get there. I mean, it wouldn't be unheard of for you guys to move through the, the, the wilderness with a bunch of guns. I mean, you could just be hunters or something along those lines. Like, that's not unheard of. I've been getting a, a lay of the boat and chatting okay. up people, you know, talking to <clears throat> boat stuff. Uh, so luck is also a stat, so let's just have you roll uh, luck. I'm so lucky at rolling my luck. I know, you are. With all my characters. It's the best way to start the game. Oh, it's a 95. Okay. Yeah, I mean, you, you you got to know some of the passengers. Um, there are some people that came on in in Portugal. Um, so you guys essentially went from Southampton, hit Portugal, um, and then did not hit anything else on the Horn of Af. That's not the Horn. The 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 co west coast of Africa until you got to Boma. So once you left Portugal, you haven't you haven't stopped on land since then. Yeah. But there's also a lot of question on what's going on in northern a Africa right now. Um, it, Italy is has been moving quite a bit, so they didn't want to stop anywhere that, that, you know, you pull into a town as a British ship, and suddenly it's Italian held. That could cause a lot of problems. So they've been avoiding those those areas. Um, any other questions? Anything that you guys might want to have looked up before you hit land? Um, you may have already said, and I just sure. I just uh, missed it. What language should we be um, expected to be confronted with when we get there? Uh, they will speak English. Your guides will speak English. Okay. It may not be the cleanest or the 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 most thorough English, but they should be able to communicate with you pretty well. Um, they will also be schooled in several local languages. Okay. Um, Which I assume that this was a, a somebody's sure. colony. It's, it's Belgium's called calling. Okay. So they will also speak Flemish. Um, yeah. So any other questions before we, I just want to give you guys a chance to prep before we go in. I didn't want to throw you in this situation and not uh, give you guys a chance to read up on something or it's so once we get to the city, it's, it's all land travel. Yeah. Um, there there might be a little bit of river travel, but it's not a lot because the Congo t typically hits a bunch of falls on its way to the ocean. Um, are we taking vehicles or going on foot? Probably a jeep for a while. Uh, at some point, you may just have to traipse through the, through the jungle on foot. Is it a jeep jeep? Is it a what is it? Um, like it'll it'll probably be two jeeps, since there will be a total of six of you. Who makes jeeps? GM. So, so it'd be the British be version American? of the Jeep. Okay, so it's something that I'd be familiar with. <clears throat> yeah, 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 yeah. To be able to. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Is it, is it something I'm familiar? With? Yeah. Okay. I mean, it's a standard military. It'll be standard military jeeps, um, and I don't know that the British sold to the Belgian. We'll just assume they did. Okay. Sure. <laughs> it makes sense. Um, just trying to think through my character. What is the sure. We're not carrying any special equipment. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'll just get a feel for the boat. Besides uh, that, yeah. John and Shirley, can I get both of you to give me an archaeology roll? <coughs> sure. <coughs> or anthropology, whichever one's higher, actually. Uh, archaeology. It's a 35 on a 51. Okay. Oh, hey, that's an important thing I need to know. Go ahead, Shirley. What'd you get? Uh, 10 under 75. Okay, so there are three types of successes in 7th edition that I did not cover. There's your regular success. That's your full stat. Uh, there's a hard success. I'm sorry, there are four kinds of successes. Regular success, that's your hard normal number. That'll be the big box. The next box is going to be a hard success. Uh, that is essentially a little bit harder. It's half of your regular skill. And then there's a an extreme success. Um, it is a fifth of your skill. There's also a critical success, which is when you roll a one. Okay, so uh, Shirley, you got a hard success, right? Mm -hmm. Or did you get a quarter or a fifth? Um, I'm under the 15. Okay, so you got a, an extreme success. And John, you just got a regular success? Regular, yep. 
Um, so between the two of you, you've talked for a little bit. There, uh, there are a lot of rumors um, in the archaeological circles. You should mark the box. You should mark the box. You should both mark the box. Mark your box. Um, mark my mark box. your box. Uh, there are a lot of rumors in the archaeological circles that there were um, sub-Saharan uh, empires prior to colonization. Unfortunately, not a lot has been done to study them or to get much information out of Africa. Um, it, 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 they call it the Dark Continent, and in, as far as archaeology goes, that's pretty solidly the case, as in no one has taken the time to study because there's a pervasive mindset in European and American culture that there's not a lot there worth studying. Um, so there's not been a lot of studying done, but there's still potentially a lot of information that could be found. Um, and the area that the, the area near where they entered into the Congo, there is a lot of lakes. It's still very jungle heavy, but at earlier times it may not have been as, um, full of jungle, jungle -y. Have so much fauna. Yes. Thank you. No, flora. Flora. I meant that. Faunals, f fauna is the animal. Yep. Right? Like a fauna. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Why are you asking the guy with an English uh, degree? Because <laughs> those are all English you're like words. Oh, okay. Educated, right? No, never mind. Actually, I think they're Latin, but. Listen. <laughs> <laughs> if we're going to make fun of Phil, we have to be all on the same page. No. Oh, okay. <laughs> I I think my, my mistake. Joke was funnier. Uh, so. Yeah, were there any other questions you guys had before we get into this? If we're so interested in it, like, what are we doing? There wasn't much to, to study. It was just that was the information that you guys passed back and forth between you and Weld before you left. Mm. Is that, hey, they may be going to an ancient site somewhere. There's stuff out there that we haven't really studied. I'll keep my eye open for stuff. Okay. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure you guys were aware. And since you're archaeologists, mm -hmm. like, that's a thing. Oh, I'm going to look for tapestries. Uh, yes, yes, because he's Scottish. Has, he's Scottish. has Sitwell Scottish. ever done anything in Africa? Um, and my backstory doesn't it doesn't indicate as much, but I was man, just I gotta read your backstory, don't I? Still in that. Um, I don't think we really went into it. Notes for Sitwell. Yeah, nope, I don't think we did. One. But nope, nope, that's not it. It's this one. Um, it says. Yes, you spent some time in Kenya, just huh. in Kenya, like as part of the army. But it was only about six months before they pulled you back. Um, so you're familiar with the fact that you don't know much about Africa. It, it, what you what you picked up is there are several cultures and you are not familiar enough with any of them. OK, so basically you just know that it's not like it's not like. <laughs> All Africans are the same. You know better than that. You saw several different cultures just in Kenya itself. Okay, cool. Are you going to die? I have no idea what this is you about. about. You about done? All right. Okay. <laughs> We're just off to a great start We're today. We're doing fantastic. Okay, <laughs> so your boat comes to the dock in Boma about a day later. Um, you are met on the dock by, uh, a, uh, army captain, a Belgian army captain who salutes you, Major Sitwell. Um, I salute back. He's accompanied by two other men, clearly Africans. Um, he says in a slightly, uh, accented English, um, my name is, uh, ca is, uh, I'm sorry. I didn't look up any Belgian names. I'm really terrible with names. I should have looked up <laughs> names. Hold on. I got this. No, That's you right. go right ahead. You look up a Belgian name. I'm going to look up a different name. Man, I didn't plan for this part. This is the best part. <laughs> You're like, I made all these plans except for names. It tends to be. A, names a are overrated. Yeah. I'll just, I can just tell the guy, you know, he'll get, tell me and I'll just forget it in two seconds. Just say NPC number one. Lucas? I'm not. Lucas yeah. is the last name? Oh, it's the last name. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Lucas Graham, the pop singer. 
He might actually be Belgian or Swedish. I don't remember now. He's over there. Sorry. Uh, Renaud Delieu. Renaud? Renaud? I think it's Renault, like the car. Okay, it could be. Delieu? D-E-L-E-U. Delieu. L-E-U? Delieu? Okay. Delieu? I had no idea. Well, because Belgian's very similar to French, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, yes and no. It's. Uh, oh, I got it. Yeah, we're good. Yes. I just know if you wanted more. Nope, that's good. I just know when I'm in Belgium, when I've been there, they've uh, translated everything into French and German. Because I think it's right right there in yeah. the middle of everything. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, da. Lieutenant. <laughs> or I, uh, he says, I, my name is Captain Deleu. I am the uh, one of the the officers here in Boma. Um, I I have been given orders that I am to assist you by giving you two men to help guide you. Uh, this is uh, Corporal uh, Kabea. Oops, you have to spell that. K A B A Y A. Okay. And Corporal Mbala, Mbula. It's uh, M-B-U-L-A. Mbala. Uh, they will be your men as far as uh, guiding you through our countryside. I'm, I understand that you're heading east. Um, we're more than happy to get you set up in our barracks for the evening. Um it is a it is about lunchtime. Um, okay. You know we can get you set up at the barracks the, the, for the evening, and you can start off first thing in the morning or start off now. But uh, your supplies have already been loaded into the jeeps, um, as far as non perishables, and then we'll get some some of the food supplies together quickly if if need be. Um, but uh, I we are all at your service for whatever you need. All right, so it's about lunchtime. Um, well, hello, I'm Sitwell. Um, it's good to meet you and your men. Um, I, with the time of day that it is, I think we should, uh, we've both, we've all been on the boat and, um, I know it hasn't been the easiest on all of us, but so I think maybe we should go ahead and go back to the barracks okay. and set off in the morning. Okay. Excellent. Um, yeah, this way. And he leads you to, uh, there are a couple of Jeeps waiting, um, one of them already has a driver, and he gets in that one. He doesn't motion for anybody to get in any specific vehicle. The two African gentlemen, both of them get in driver's seats of the other two uh, Jeeps, and then he just like kind of leaves it to you guys on how you figure this out. Um, there's more than enough room for two of you to easily fit in each Jeep. It's just a matter of what you want to do. And then you do have your bags. You probably wouldn't have trunks. You would probably have... Um, rucksacks or uh those other military bags that you put stuff in what do you call i those? probably would have mentioned to um lieutenant drummond yeah. uh at some point or i would make a comment at this point that uh i think one of us should stick with one of like one of the archaeologists we should split the as far as that goes have someone with military training sure yeah um i'll see to the american Okay. <laughs> what does that even mean? Well, it means you're I mean, with me. <laughs> he's probably gonna hop on a horse and shoot some stuff, so you can't really trust him. Wait, who's the American? John. Oh, me. geez, Louise. Oh, Zoiks. Sorry. Um. Yeah. So I. Each <clears throat> I would um. Very brusquely, go up to a. Uh, Captain Sitwell. Is it Captain Colonel? Major. I am a major. Major. Jeez Louise. Didn't spend more, uh, three weeks in major school to be called Captain. <laughs> That's right. Um, you know, uh, tug on your uh, tug on your sleeve and like kind of pull you toward me and lean up to whisper. Um, you know, maybe we should leave now. You know, not no time to lose and all that. Uh, are, are we could? Are we you could sure? Eat I, I, I seem right. Is there uh, enough on the 
vehicles. I mean, I'm sure there is. I, I just thought that maybe you, you didn't seem very comfortable on the boat. I thought maybe you would like to just, are you, was it no, just a, no, I, we could, um, well, I, there's so much ground to cover. We should probably get going as soon as possible. Um, well, let me, let me, um, let us talk to our, our, um, companions and see how, how they are, how they are feeling. Okay. Oh, very well then. Thank you for mm -hmm. taking it under consideration. Yes. Um, I would motion, sit well motions for, for Drummond. Have you guys already gotten in the car? Uh, or are you still standing around? I'd be probably standing near the car, keeping an eye on Beecham, and then just keeping a general eye on the crowd and the flow. And okay. Well, and I would I would probably go over to you, um, and and essentially relay that uh, Northcutt would like to start out immediately, and it, I would I would I would confer with you to see if you agreed or if you thought a night's rest would be good before we go. I would say that uh, time is of the essence. Um, so if you and um, the lady are up for it and um, our American uh, companion is up for it, then Be I'm up for it. Beach yeah. Him. yeah. I I'm up for it, but I will say uh, if we want to know anything else from you know, Captain Delu, uh, this is probably our only opportunity then. Because we're going to be departing directly. He's not coming with us. All right. Well, then. But I'm just saying, if, if anyone doesn't really see any information that we need from him, we can go ahead and go. Well, do you have questions for him? Not really. That's why I'm mentioning to everyone else. He might have rumors of movements. Activity. You know, so. Yeah, I will. Besides um, asking him that, I don't think it's a lengthy conversation to have with him. Yeah. No, that's fine. Um, let's go ahead and talk to Dayu uh, and find out if they've gotten any more, um, if anybody's had any eyes on uh, the Germans as or anyone else that might be of interest, so, namely the Egyptian woman. So you're going to approach Beach, or you're going to approach Dayu now to, to ask him that, or do you guys want to go back to the to barracks and do that there? Yeah, because we probably won't leave directly from here out into the jungle. We're probably going to have to take him back to the barracks anyways. Well, he's in a separate car. True, true. Well, let's go Let's go ask. Let's yeah, let's perishables. let's go talk to him right now. <clears throat> um, so, yeah, he's in the front, uh, in the, the lead jeep. When he sees Major, when he sees the, the group of you coming, he gets out and uh, it says, uh, was there, I'm sorry, was there an issue? Uh, there was a misunderstanding amongst uh, me and my people, but um, that, uh, but I believe the lieutenant has some questions for you, um, and we probably will. These jeeps are coming with us, correct? Anyway, wherever we go. Yeah, at least two. The two of the other two with the, the other two your yes. guides. They'll be driving. Um, okay, I'll. I might step away and just go uh, tell them that there has been a change of plan very sure. quickly, and sure. I'll I'll return to the group as soon We're as we're thinking about it going. Right now, as soon as possible. Okay, uh, I I have no problem with that. It's just a matter of what's up, what works best for you, Lieutenant. Uh, the major said you had some questions. Uh, just primarily one. Um, can you um, share any information about any troop movements um, that uh, you're aware of? Um, to the best of my knowledge, um, as of yesterday, <clears throat> um, sometimes the wires come a little slow from our outer um, bases. There has been nothing seen outside of the jungles in eastern in in the eastern part of the country or colony. He doesn't say country; he says colony. Uh, there hasn't been anything outside of outside of the jungles in the eastern part of the colony uh, for the last week. Um, we were told to keep an eye out for uh, non-Belgians coming from that direction. Uh, it's my understanding there may be some Nazis, but uh, we haven't seen anything. But we also don't patrol deep into the jungle. It just, it, like, there's no way to do that. Between the the way the mountains sit and um, the lack of proper roads, it's it's it would be a lot of work just to blaze a trail that's not going to be useful in no, a couple of that, weeks. That, that's fair. Um, is there anything that you think we should know? <clears throat> um, 
that that our guides aren't going to already. No, I think actually, stuff. as far as that area goes, your guides are either going to know or know how, where to get the information better than I will. I have spent my almost my entire time here in Boma. Um, I, I haven't really been to the eastern part of the country or the eastern part of the colony. Um, it just, you know, it's not been where I've been assigned. So, um, but they they have knowledge of local people in the area. They were born here, raised here, no. so th th they might sense. be they will be your a, a valuable asset. I would think. I've tried to find the two most knowledgeable and trustworthy men I can. So, well, I deeply thank you, um, sir. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we will need to stop at uh, the base just briefly to get you your consumables, um, but that shouldn't take more than ten minutes to load it up. Awesome, thank you. Okay, um, so he, if you guys are you guys going back to the other two jeeps? Yes. Yeah. Uh, before I go, I just want to sure. I, I stop. Sure. Uh, Captain. Yes. How much do you watch other foreign nationals who come through the area? Um, <clears throat> as far as what I keep an eye on right now, I know that we 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 sit in a very um, precarious position. I think you. I'm sorry. Your name is uh, not Drummond. Beach Harrogate. Beach him, Harrogate. You, Mr. Harrogate. Uh, I, as far as as far as what we watch is anybody leaving the docks or the areas that would they would normally interact with. We we keep an eye on Germans. Uh, we sit in a precarious position where uh, our government is in exile because our country has been taken, um, and because of that, uh, we find. We find that we have to be very careful because uh, if the Germans feel that we're hiding anything or have anything of worth, it's it's not. There's nothing stopping them from bringing a, a military craft up the river and landing troops. Uh, so we have to we have to be concerned about that. But I haven't seen anything. I haven't seen anything questionable come across my desk lately. Well. Not so much. Uh, I'm not really looking for anything so much questionable, but so you mainly pay attention to Germans. So someone who might be traveling under, say, uh, British background, not so much. Um, unless they did something that would lead lend us to question their intent. No, that's what I needed to know. Thank you. I'll start walking back towards the Jeep. Anybody else, or are you just hopping in the Jeeps? Uh, yep. In the Jeeps? Okay, so you're going to pair up the way you were. So uh, the lieutenant is watching, is with the American in a Jeep, and then the major is with the, the lady? Yes. Okay, that's just wanted to verify. Uh, you guys take a 10-minute ride um, the, to a military base. You're stopped. It's very clearly guarded well. Um you get onto the base, pull up in front of uh, what looks to be um, the mess, um, and the the driver from the first jeep hops out, and the captain hops out as well. He goes off towards what looks like offices, uh, but the driver goes in, and the, your two drivers go in as well. They come out a couple minutes later um, with bags with obvious provisions in them, put them in the jeeps, and... Uh, Kabea, the the gentleman in the front for the front jeep who's driving the front jeep says, uh, "Before we leave, is there anything else that we need to get? Do you need anything? We have maps, everything we would need as far as that goes." But I rummage through the bags for a a piece of bread or a loaf of bread or something. No loaves of bread. What the hell's in there? Hardtack. Carrot. The uh, no. Like what's hardtack? Is it like? It's like meat that has been um, <clears throat> jerked, but not. It's like super. It's like super hard military it's, food. It's um, so hard that uh, parasites can't get into it. Yeah, there's a bunch of cans of food that That's they'll disgusting. that they would be heating up. This is this is full on military rations. Okay, so it's not that um, like really hard, you know, like granola bars, but it's. You, oh no! Okay, you could hope for that. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, there probably are some like How chocolate bars. How big are the pieces of um, tack? Uh, Is it cut up like beef jerky? No, it's like a solid like uh, 
rectangle. It's a big chunk. How do you eat it? It's like a brick. Break it off, cut it off. Uh, yep. Well, I wouldn't know what to do with that. You might have something with you. There's also chocolate. I'll grab some chocolate. But it, it is uh, There's very no much grains or anything? No. It's, no. it's a lot of, like, well, there's coffee, like, mm. ground coffee. But, okay, like, th so. you're expected tea? to... Be Yes, of course. There better be some tea. They, they knew the Brits were coming. <laughs> no, <laughs> they, they, yeah, they the do Brits have tea. Well, <laughs> what else? It the hardtack is a bread, not meat. That's what I thought. Really? Okay, sure. I it's mean, yeah, like it's like it's like a really like hard like cracker. Sure, if you if you thing. want a giant cracker, you can have one. No, <laughs> I'll t I'll grab some chocolate. Okay, uh, it is very European chocolate. It's not very sweet. I'm from Europe. Well, I mean, you're from like Europe's cousin like over there across but the But end or something? Like what? What are you trying to say? Um, like thing, no. <laughs> no, it's just not it's not very sweet. Anything else you guys needed? Um just to like the last civilization yeah no. <clears throat> just to the rest you? of the party. I mean my characters I'm uh, you know I'll I'll approach everyone. I know I'm kind of new to this entire situation and so I'm just trying to figure everything out but uh is there any chance that this uh, individual that we're really curious about could be operating as the lady of sandwich or anything like that here you believe that she might be within this city? well no I, if only if they're only really paying attention to germans coming in and out of the country is it possible that you know they could have agents here operating otherwise, such as her operating as the lady of Sam. Well, they did. They did note her. Yeah. As a possible and Egyptian. She's. It looks Egyptian. They yeah, could have other operatives Egyptian. here, but. Yeah. Well, it is also known that uh, because the Lord is dead and Nidicris and, and was found to be a traitor to to the mm -hmm. British Empire, her any connection to British nobility for her or nobility for her is gone. So she wouldn't okay. be able to travel under at least that auspice. Yeah. Doesn't mean she wouldn't try something else, but that wouldn't be an option for her. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying. My character is really trying to get a feel for where everything is at with this. Sure. So, sure. Yeah. Um, so you guys uh, travel. We're going to kind of pass over a little bit of the travel because it's not that important. Uh, the roads here are not great. Once you get outside of Boma, um, you do pass through a couple of other small towns, but there are a lot of dirt. And then they turn into a lot of mud. Um, it, what now? So the the guides, I know we're like kind of probably far away from sure. it, so they're just kind of leading us towards where at this point they have their best guess is. They know that, that you want to get to the eastern part of the country yeah. or the colony, and then once you get there, they're going. They they will give you. They they they, they, can they, talk they, to people. they tell you you know like we're gonna head to the western or the eastern part of the colony. Once we're there. It's better for us to start talking to the locals to see what they've noticed. Um, obviously, if they're in the jungle, we might be able to, to close off an area that we can look through. That's our plan right now. Okay, thank you. Um, so the roads get muddy. It is a it is a jungle region. So even when the roads are um, good, you're passing through a lot of vegetation and a lot of hills and a lot of mountain mountainous region. Um, you travel for a couple of days, probably no more than 35 miles an hour at any any given time. Um, and you finally pull into a small village. Um, Kebala says that it is the, the village of Kasango. Um, says to the east of here um, is a large uh, jungle area that we believe would be a good place to start. Kasango might have if, if there's anyone that knows about that area, Kasango is going to be the place that, that we would find them. Sounds good. Um, so they pull up kind of, um, they pull up off of the road. There is a small, um, almost like a barracks. It's not even a full military base. It's more of, you can see the Belgian flag flying um, and you can see a couple of men standing guard in a tower um, next to it, but it's just one building, probably is barracks and canteen, and you know it fill, f fills everything. Um, and uh, uh, so just an outpost. Yeah, uh, Kabbalah and the two men in the guard tower. It is should be noted are African. 
it was very clear at the military base that officers are white, non-officers mm. are black. Okay. It's very segregated. It's just something to note. So if I ever say you see, you know, just some soldiers, they're probably black. Um, if you if you I say, well, you see an officer, it's almost guaranteed to be white. Um, so okay. uh, they uh, they pull up in front of the the little military area, uh, uh, military building. Um, they get out and they grab a couple of uh, like a they both grab their backpacks. Not they're not heavily filled. Um, both of them grab their guns, their rifles, and then like kind of motion for you guys to follow them inside. All right, we do. Um, inside, you find what you would expect um, a very large barracks to look like. There is a cooking area. There is a sitting area, but it's maybe three tables that would hold maybe 25 people at most. Um, on a quick count, you, you count maybe 15 men, um, two officers. The rest are all uh, not uh, are all enlisted men. Um, when they the when Kabbalah and and Bula. Kabea, Kabea and Imbula walk in. Uh, they are greeted by a couple of guys who seem to know them, but they go back to what they're doing. Like the 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 level of um, the level of security here is much lower than what you expected in the previous or what you saw in the previous uh, military uh, base. Okay. Um, Kabea kind of drops his bag on the table um, and sets his rifle down next to it. And then kind of walks in farther and starts talking to a couple of guys. Uh, and Bula sets his down and then uh, kind of just leans against the table and waits like he's waiting for Kabea to come back. And it's been kind of clear the last couple of days. Kabea is not outranking him, but um, has more experience. So Mbula just lets him do what okay. he's doing and kind of follows his lead. Sounds good. What do you guys do? You do hear some English from some of the, the soldiers speaking back and forth to each other. Um, and there is um, that there are two officers. Um, one is a captain. The other one's a lieutenant. I walk over to uh, Embola yeah. and I'll pretty much ask him. So is he getting information? Uh, he's probably. He and, and I'm pointing at uh, Kabea. Yeah. yeah. Walk, you know, when I say that. Uh, he. um uh, he's probably checking in here so that when he starts asking around town, uh, they don't get a report and, and have to come track us down and find out what we're doing. Um, uh, he's not from this area, but he has lots of friends. Um, so I, I, I'm sure he'll come back and let us know what's going on. But uh, until then, our our stuff it will be good here. If uh, you wanted to bring your things inside, it will be safe. I don't know how quickly we would have to leave an area. Okay, I, how I would have brought I'll my go. stuff in. I would not have okay. left my stuff on guard. I assume everybody has one bag with clothes and like their personal effects in it. Uh, and the rest of the, what's in the jeeps are, are uh, food and and like sleeping stuff. Yeah. So, um, Sitwell would go over to the uh, where he hears English. Uh, there are a couple of guys talking, playing uh, cards. Um, you recognize uh, like a version of Rummy that you're okay. not super familiar. You're not completely familiar with what exactly they're doing, but you, you, you know, this is cards. The cards are pretty beat up, but that's kind of expected. That's what soldiers have, so that's what they play with. Right. Th this wouldn't be the first time you've seen that that condition of the cards. Uh, they seem to be having a good time, and then when they notice that you have walked up, they both stand at attention. And wait for you to address them. Oh, um, at ease. Uh, I'm Major Sitwell, and we are here with a couple guides. Um, I was just, uh, you know, I don't want to take you away from your game for very long, but uh, what's been going on out here? Anything, anything interesting? Uh, the one, one of one of the guys speaks up. He says, uh, uh, nothing important." We're we keep being told that we should be on alert um, for possible incursions from the east, but there's it's too thick out there. Yeah, it looks it looks pretty bad. Um, we'll be heading into that 
soon. Um, but so yeah, so nothing. You guys are just on alert and haven't seen anybody. Yeah, uh, it's been as exciting as normal. I mean, we keep an eye on the roads out here. Uh, we do our patrols. Um, make sure that you know everything's taken care of. But other than that, it's it's a relatively quiet post. All right then. Well, um, that's all I really wanted to know. So as you were, um, and uh, I would walk away at they, that point. They kind of salute, like they're not sure if they're supposed to or not. <laughs> but yeah, they once once you've taken a few step steps away, they both sit down and seem to relax and go back to playing. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry if I missed this. Approximately what time? Oh no, I didn't give you. Uh, it's probably mid afternoon after lunch <laughs> before dinner. <clears throat> Uh, has any dinner preparation begun? Uh, yeah, there is a there is their cook is clearly like prepping vegetables and meat and stuff. He if you had to guess, you're looking at he's probably cooking for twenty five. Uh, that's what you're sure. that's what you're approximating. Sure. Um, I'll approach him and uh, try to speak to him in English. Uh, he uh, nods at you and he responds in very broken English. Um, it's he can tell what. He understands you and what you're saying, but he doesn't. Sp it's clear he doesn't speak it well. Um, I'll try to have him uh, indicate how I can uh, help him with the meal. Oh, uh, yeah, he uh, motions. I'm a good cook. He motions uh, so some spices that you're not super familiar with, but you see <laughs> some uh, rice, sweet potatoes, um, plantains, pumpkin, stuff that you've well worked with before, and he uh, kind of starts explaining how to cook it. It's different from what you're used to, but it's cooking, so yeah. it's just a, a little bit different on how they would make it. Um, the rice is a like a yellow rice instead of a white or a brown, um, and he's just prepping what he needs to prep, and he's happy to have the help. Okay. He hands you an apron. <laughs> I put it on. Yeah. So, uh, you guys are gonna. If there's any like equipment that's not quite working right, I might tweak that too. Sure, sure. <laughs> um. You guys are there for another 15 or 20 minutes, um, and Kabea comes back um, and comes over to the major. Are you, I, Phil, are you going to stay over at the kitchen, or when Kabea comes back, are you going to stop what you're doing? Um, I'll kind of keep an eye on the major, but unless it seems like there's a need to, okay. I'm going to let the major handle okay. the major's business. Okay. Uh, he pr approaches the major. Uh, I assume Rebecca and Harrogate are there as well. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, oh, if they're already in a group, then I'll. Oh, okay. I'll join. Yeah, it. yeah. Um, There's no need to have them repeat to me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he says, uh, Major. Um, I wanted to make sure that we didn't cause a stir here uh, by asking around. Um, I think I know I, I know who to talk to about the area. I think I know where to find them. Um, my concern is the more we ask around, the more the, the locals are going to talk. So I'm not sure how much of what we're looking for you want getting around. Um, not a whole lot. Okay. I think that would be safe to it will try to... Go ahead. I'm sorry. I was gonna say, I think we should try to keep as much of a of a um, not necessarily low profile, but what we're here doing is really not anyone's business. Um, but I'm sure some of that will get out in some way. But we should just be careful. Okay. Um, by limiting our exposure it may slow things down or make it more difficult i just want you to have an expectation before i get started okay um would you all four like to accompany me i'm concerned that the number of people that go the more we take i take uh the more on edge um the gentleman i'm going to speak with uh, the more on edge he's going to be i mm -hmm. don't mind retiring to a tent or uh, what do you, have, I'm sorry. What do you mean tent? Do we have a place barracks place to? Oh, it, you, oh! If we're staying here tonight, you're in the the, the like. So you're seeing a sitting area and a cooking mm -hmm. area. Beyond that, 
there is essentially a sleeping area. It's all one big building. Okay. It's a big dormitory style. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, so I guess my question is, are we staying here tonight? I don't know. That's up to you guys. I don't know. <laughs> oh. Um, well, how far away is the individual that you need to speak to? Is Are they uh, here? If he's not in town, he's maybe a 20-minute hike. Okay. I don't mind staying. Yeah, I don't think we should all go. Um, but I do feel one of the one of you that are um, if you're if you're going to stay, uh, Rebecca, I, I think Beecham needs to join needs to come. At one at least one archaeologist should come. Um, uh, Lieutenant, would you rather stay here? It seemed like you were helping with the with the cookery over there and having a good time i don't know if you wanted to stay or if you would like to go um given um the concerns i'm comfortable having um beecham uh go you know with kabaya um okay. just the two of them uh, if you'd like him accompanied i can go or i can uh stay here and um make sure we have um... a tasty meal I'm trying to think which one of us would be better suited to go. Because I'm okay sending two with Kabea, <laughs> whether it's me or you. Um, why don't, why don't, um, why don't you go ahead and, and go? And I will keep an eye here if that's all right with you. Yes, of course. Uh, Kabea. I guess I am the in charge. I should act like it. <laughs> Kabea, uh, what um, armament would there are if if he's not in town once we once we get headed outside of town um, there are animals in the jungle so uh, carrying a rifle would not be unheard of um, I would say one long arm one side arm nothing more all right I'll carry my rifle and my pistol okay well revolver sorry Pistol, stall, revolver. Okay. So okay. So um, yeah, let, let's get headed there now. And he kind of heads out the door. Um, I'll leave my other things with. Uh, I guess I don't know where I'll leave. I mean, <laughs> I'll find it's a, a big, it's a big open room. It's not like they're. they're so I'll leave with the major. Well, no, I'm not gonna leave with my superior officer. Never mind. Uh, yeah, I'll stash it away. Yeah, okay. well, um, those of us staying behind, we'll keep an eye on, on okay. things. Okay. Uh, so Beecham and uh, Drummond are going... I'm sorry, Harrogate and Drummond are going to go with Kabea, right? Is that what I'm getting? Correct. Yes. Okay. So you guys go back out. He Kabea gets, immediately gets back in the Jeep. He motions for you guys to get in. Once you're in, he starts driving. Um, the town is not big, um, but he kind of gets to the edge of town. Um, and stops in front of a small house. What looks like a probably a one or two room house at most. Um, he gets out. Um, he pulls out his pistol, checks to make sure he has a round chambered, puts on his safety and puts it back. Doesn't latch his buckle on that. <laughs> and then grabs his rifle and, and puts it over his shoulder like you would expect to see. Uh, and then he walks up to the door. And I assume both of you follow him in appropriate yeah. fashion. Uh, I'll similarly uh, prepare myself. Okay. Then, yeah. um, he uh, steps up to the door, uh, takes his rifle off of his shoulder, and uses the butt to knock on the door. Not not pound on it, but ha knock hard. And takes like two steps back away from the door. And then puts a rifle back up on his shoulder. Um, and it's maybe to the count of a uh, slow count of 15 and the door uh, opens slowly and you see um, I wouldn't say old, but he is definitely not young. Um, he's got some gray in his hair. Um, he's got a bit of a beard, um, probably about what Phil you have right now, uh, but it's streaked with gray um, in some places and his eyes. Um, uh, 
I would say, look, uh, Drummond, you have seen men that have seen things in combat. That is what his eyes look like. Like he is aware that that there is violence available out there, and he's prepared for it. Um, so when he opens his door just enough to look out, and then when he sees Kabea, um, he smiles. Um, he's got a couple of teeth missing. Missing. Not that his his teeth are bad, but like they've been knocked out. Um, and he opens the door the rest of the way and sets a shot a double barrel shotgun kind of up against the wall just inside the door, and steps out and. He just closes the door mostly behind him. He says, Kabea, it's good to see you. In English? Yes. Okay. Um, uh, and Kabea says, this is uh, Matala. Uh, he uh, he is a local... Um, he, he knows the jungle. <laughs> um, can I get both of you guys to give me a psychology role? Sure. Uh, I got a six on a six D. Six D. Okay. So you got a hard success. That would be extreme, uh, yeah. wouldn't it? No, because that's not a five. That's not. Oh. What's 20%? Well, no, that is an extreme. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. It's, you got an extreme. Uh, 30 and then 12. Okay. What'd you get, Phil? 22 over 10. Okay. So, uh, Beecham, you get the impression you've dealt with criminals before. Oh, yeah. He's a criminal, probably a poacher is what you'd guess, if he knows the jungle. But Kabea doesn't want to say that because, like, you're, uh, uh, you're connected with the military. If he says that, then there may be a question about whether or not you should take him in. Plus, if Kabea knows him like that, there's just, it's just a big gray area. Uh, but this is what you would expect. Essentially, this is, this is his CI. This is the guy he knows that knows things. Um, and Matala says, uh, yes, uh, welcome. Uh, how may I uh, help you today? You find uh, uh, Europeans. We're looking to find some Nazis. Oh, you mean the men in the jungle? You've, You've seen them. I... Uh, a little less than a week ago, I saw a group of them moving through an area I was um, walking through, and he does pause. <laughs> it's a long pause. Uh, and I felt that men armed like that were didn't have my best interests at heart, and so I left the area and came back home and stayed closer to home over the last week. Can you remember you... what direction they were traveling? I can give uh, I can give Kabea some decent directions that should get you there, um, but I will warn you: it is the area is teeming with life. Uh, how do you say? Um, not safe. Be careful. You need to be careful. That is the word. Do you also perhaps know of any? I don't know. Unusual things in the area. Things that people steer away from usually. There are um, there are some stone ruins out in that general area. I wouldn't say people steer away from them, but they are so overgrown that they're hard to get to or find even if you knew where even if you were on top of them. If we could get instructions to those as well, that'd be good. I yes. Uh, he turns to Kabea and speaks in what you have come to understand is probably Congolese, and they they rapidly speak back and forth, which is probably no faster than you would normally they would normally speak, but it sounds very rapid. Um, and Kabea keeps like shaking his head and like seems to be asking questions and then shaking his head again when he gets an answer. And Kabea says, "Watching, I, yeah." Go ahead. Uh, I'd like uh, with, with Kabea. I'd like to keep an eye on him and see how he's responding. If he seems to be getting agitated or worried himself. Uh, no, no, he seems to be like. If you had to guess from what you what you're seeing, he's verifying to make sure he understands. Okay. Like turn left at the tree. What do you mean the tree? Like which tree is that? Is it? It it, it very much that he is clarifying what he's being told. So he's getting the best information possible. Um, you can't tell what the information is necessarily, 
but you do see that he is like he's doing what he should. He, he's doing a good job. Um, okay. And Kabea, after they've talked for a couple of minutes, Kabea says, I, I'm relatively certain I can get us there. Um, worst case, I can get us back and uh, he can go back out with us. But Matala doesn't wish to go out right now. And Matala smiles a big grin and says, uh, men that view me as a, as a true savage are too much of a danger. I, uh, I nod. So, um, Kamea says, uh, no, I, I think we have everything we need. Um, th to be honest, I would feel more comfortable leaving for the jungle in the morning, but that is, that is up to you. That's a decision we'll have, uh, yeah. with the major. Excellent. Um, uh, mi Mr. Harrogate? Mr.? Yeah. Um, is there anything else yes. you'd like to, um, Ask of uh, our new friend here about the ruins or anything to prepare for our trip? Not anything off the top of my head at this point. Um, you see uh, Kabea pull out um, a small uh, amount of uh, money and, and shake Matala's hand with it. Um, going off your extreme success earlier, John... Mm -hmm. so you get the impression that it would be embarrassing for Kabea to pay Matala for the the information, but it would also be rude to not give him something for – or not compensate him for what he's done. Does that make sense? Yeah. So he's kind of trying to quietly do it, but not so much that – he's not trying to hide it from you, just keep it out of the, the, the eye of, of uh, society. Like, it, it's a very clear indication that – what was going on there for at least for you yeah. lieutenant you have no idea what's going on you just see him shake hands and you don't know what <laughs> what for mm -hmm. um uh, and then kabea like heads back to the the car or the jeep and gets in starts it up um and as you guys are driving back he says uh i found matala's information to be trustworthy sometimes though his reactions to startling situations are not predictable it's good information um how far away are the the places that he told you about um we're looking at the better day of a hike um and that's assuming we don't run into anything out of the ordinary it's the jungle so we're probably going to run into something out of the ordinary um there are a lot of there there are gorillas in the jungle um, that can become G O R, yes, G O R. That can become territorial, um, and there are other animals out there that could cause a problem. We may have to backtrack, depending on how I'm reading the situation. I'll, I'll need to talk, discuss this with the major because I know we're trying to keep a, a low profile. If we wanted men to help clear um, paths. Is that something that you would be able to assist us with? I, it might take a day or two more to grab a, a number of men that I would feel comfortable with. I wouldn't take Matala into that situation. Okay. At Just least, gathering information to yeah, provide to the Major. At least not for... I wouldn't take Matala out there unless he was going to lead us to a point and then point us the rest of the way. C putting him into a conflict could turn chaotic. Okay. Yeah, I'm just looking for, like, laborers. To, like, yeah, yeah, no, no. Job stuff. <laughs> um, so you guys get back. Um, it's not quite dinner time, but you can. You guys all can smell the food cooking. Uh, during the time they've been gone, Major and Rebecca, what have you guys been doing? I've been playing rummy. I've been journal writing. Journal writing and rummy. Okay. Uh, with the two guys you talked to, for <clears throat> waiting for dinner. The, with the two guys you talked to earlier, uh, yeah, major. Okay, they teach you pretty quickly the the the, the little differences. Um, you play through a couple of games. They seem like genuinely good men. Um, they just you know they're burning time because they've got nothing else going on. Um, 
and yeah, and so yeah, everybody like everything seems pretty smooth. Uh, the lieutenant does come over and check with oh, in with you a couple of times, uh, major, mostly just to check and make sure you're all right. You you seem to have him nervous, but more like you outrank his commanding officer, so he needs to make sure that you're comfortable. Oh, I'm fine, lieutenant. I'm fine. Okay. Uh, so, uh, you guys get back, uh, are you guys going to talk in the barracks, out of the barracks, like, where, where are you guys going to have the conversation? Based on previous conversations, <coughs> I would invite, um, I'd ask the Major if she'd like to take a, or if he would like to take a walk. Okay, just the Major? Um, no, I guess I would ask them both if they would like to take a walk. Okay. All right. Well, yeah, I, I would invite I, I would invite all three of them, but primarily be like, "Hey, we got back. You guys want to go for?" It? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Um. Okay. So, uh, the four of you are gonna go for a, a stroll. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. All right. <coughs> uh, you guys, uh, start your stroll. Go, go ahead. Yeah. Um, Major, uh, we, uh, Kabaya believes, um. He has the information um, to lead us to where um, I don't know if I'm an informant, but so uh, um, where a local has um, seen recently some uh, Nazi activity and as well as um, a potential site of some ruins in the area that the, um, that um, I imagine that the Nazis might be interested in. Um, so mm -hmm. um, that seems successful. Um, Kabea would prefer to start out into the jungle um, like at first thing in the morning. The location that was discussed is about a day's hike, um, and that's only kind of perhaps at best if uh, in the event that we have to backtrack and those types of things, it could delay that further. Um, okay. I did... Just ask him as just a point of information for um, for you as if um, it would be possible to perhaps get men to um, clear a path to you know perhaps make things easier for us. And he said that that might take another day to arrange for, and then obviously it could um, increase our visibility. So I'm not sure if it would be beneficial or not, but I thought I'd share that information as well. Increase our visibility as far as other people seeing us? Yes. Okay. Um, while he is um, going over the time frame, uh, I would be looking at, or I would be kind of out of the corner of my eye, seeing if if Northcut seems to be interested. You know, is is she still like this needs to happen right now? Like, does this seem like this is agitating no. her that it could take like three days? <clears throat> no, no. So she okay. has. She is totally different from when you saw her near after at the boat or on the boat um, or okay. right after getting off the boat. She is totally calmed down. Um, basically very well put together as you had seen her when you first met her. Okay, cool. Um, as far as as far as clearing out a path as as much as that sounds like it would be more convenient just as far as traveling goes, I feel like that's probably not the best route to take. Um, Cause I feel like that would possibly draw attention if the people that we're trying to find also have scouts and things like that. Um, I think our best bet would be to probably start out in the morning and just do our best to uh and be very circumspect in the way that we travel to uh, hopefully avoid any uh major conflict on the way and so uh, you said the nazis have been seen as well as ruins are the are the nazis at the ruins that is or are those two separate locations the the direction that the uh man who provided the information sorry the man who provided the information said that the 
Nazis were headed in that general direction. Okay, so and there them. are ruins in that direction. And yes, and based okay. on response to a question from um, Mr. Harrigan, um, that, then uh, I, oh, go ahead. Sorry, just the, yeah, that <clears throat> Mr. Harrigan prompted him about ruins, and they he brought those up, and they're in the same general direction, is my understanding. Okay. That they were going. Um, then I think our best plan of action right now is to go back eat rest because traveling through this this bush is not going to be very easy um i think we need as much rest as we can take and actually get at least better food than we have been having um yes, sir. and hopefully anyway I'll go and check in. uh start in the morning yes sir. all right well that is actually a great place for us to take a break uh, we have other podcasts out there. Uh, you can find them <clears throat> on nerdsdom.com. That includes podcasts that John and Roxy do, like uh, the the one about Fringe that I can't think of the name of. Pattern Recognition. There you go. I should recognize that pattern. You should, uh, <laughs> yeah. And uh, other great stuff from them, uh, gaming stuff as well. Uh, you can find yeah, that all over at nerdsdom.com. Otherwise, we will talk to you guys next week. All righty. Mute. And that will do it for us tonight on the Nerds Domain Presents Masks of Nyarlathotep. Head on over to our website at nerdsdom.com where you can find all of our social media links as well as how to contact us. Be sure to sign up for the newsletter while you're there. If you want to support us, you can give us a five-star rating on iTunes or head to our Patreon and become one of our Patronuses. We want to thank Passion Early for our music. You can check out our show notes for all of these links as well.